Um, we're, we're back on the good side now. You played that uh, – you had that streak there. I think there was, what, four possessions. They had like 18 yards. Um, so you're back on the good side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wasn't a whole lot of um, – Flash plays, honestly, um, but I think it's one of the better uh, total football games that we've played. And I know, you know, there toward the end, we we rotate some guys in, and probably doesn't look like that from the outside. But watching the video with 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 the first half, and um, um, you know, there in the third quarter, I thought it was one of the, the more complete. You know, good fundamentals, good run fits, good le- you know, playing with good leverage. You know, pad and hand leverage. Um, you know what their their <clears throat> their scheme. I said this last week. We're very, really familiar with it, going back with Coach Satterfield's days at, at App State. Um, and it's hard, man. There's a lot of ways they can they can get leverage on you and get your leverage going one way and bend bend their plays um, back the other way with misdirection. I thought our guys handled it really well. Um, I think we held them well below their their average of rushing. Um, you know, I, and, and I don't know if I said this to you guys last week, but said this to our players going into the game. It's really – their statistics were really misleading in a lot of ways. Um, thought they were really, really – they were better than their record. But their offensive statistics were um, really good in a lot of areas that really didn't match up with, with being three and seven. Um, so I thought our guys did a really good job against their strength. Four straight 200 yard rushing games coming in. And you held them considerably below that. I think 140, I think. Yeah, yeah, whatever it was, yeah. Um, were you surprised that they came out with the other quarterback and then they kept kind of going between them? Did that catch you off guard a little bit? No, they had been they had been doing that since probably three games ago. Um, had been rotating guys in um, for what reason, don't, don't know. Um, you know, that's, that's, <clears throat> that's, a, that's a them question. Uh, but – uh, they we we were expecting that. I didn't. I I would not know he that that sixteen was going to start. Um, but we were familiar with his game. We studied his game for the majority of the week just because we knew we were going to see him probably at second series or I, I figured they would go every other series with him. Um, probably would have seen him more, but I think he dinged his ankle on the Q draw in the red zone there, um, and they pulled him out. So probably would have seen a lot more of him. One more here. Um, flip around to this week. Heat could be an issue. You go into it thinking, I've got to play more guys with the potential of heat down there? Uh, you know, I mean, this time of year, maybe. Um, it's a little little warmer, seasonally warmer than, than, than it is, but it ain't going to be no hotter than UCF. So, and we. Night too, so that's, yeah, yeah, it's not. I don't, I don't think it's much of an issue. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell us about Day Day a little bit, because we've never met him, but in every video, it seems like he's having the. <laughs> the time of his life, you know, dancing yeah. or I yeah. mean, just other than a football player, what's what's he like? I mean, it, and what he brings is a, is a ton of energy, and and he, you know, Day Day's a he's a big personality, and I think that's important. Um, I think it's important to have, especially defensively. I mean, the guy, uh, he, he his his energy hardly ever changes, and he's always um, he's just as excited to practice as he is to play. And man, that that's, that brings a lot to the table. Um, brings a lot to the sideline, um, and particularly when you know when things are going good, when things are going bad. Um, and and day days that you know is that type of guy. Um, you know, just, like I said, big personality, and and that never changes. You know, he's he's constant, and whether it's pregame or or the, the walkthrough we just got out of. You know, he's he's the same guy all the time, and is a high energy, high juice guy. And, um, brings a lot, you know, picks us up. Um, but a lot of fun to be around. I, I love having players like that around. Study the tape. You do, obviously. <coughs> but from afar, it looks like Ben Cutter is growing before our eyes. Is that what you're seeing when you evaluate him? Yeah, I mean, he and, – and, and, you know, I think for him is, you know, obviously you, you, you feel what – you, you feel you know what you're getting through the evaluation process in recruiting. Which is a guy that plays hard. He's extremely physical. Um, has a has a motor that runs hot and runs all the time. Um, you know, and I think a lot of that that you know, there's you know, you, but you still know there's a lot you're going to have to teach. Whether it's the leverage, the 
hand placement, your footwork, you know, uh, uh, your keys and how that's so much different from where he was where he was playing 12 months ago. And that's really, really hard on a true freshman. And any, in, in any criticism of Ben throughout this process is 100% not, not fair. That's a lot on a freshman. And that's a true freshman out there uh, at your starting Mike linebacker, which is a, a position that, in, in my opinion, is just vital to the success of a defense. And he's, and he's been handed that role uh, he earned that. I say been handed. He earned that role through practice and preparation. It was probably thrown on him before he was ready. But the growth over the last, you know, four to five weeks has been has been tremendous to watch. Uh, ben Cutter's going to play a lot of ball here, and he's going to have a really good career here. Um, and you know, he's he's a guy that, you know, he's fun to coach. Um, he's more critical of himself than than Jeff and I or, 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 or Neil is, and, and uh, that's, in, that's important. Um, but it's, he's, you know, it, it has, it's been fun to, to watch him grow. And, and he played, you know, I think the best part of his game the other day was how he fit the run. And it's not going to show up on a stat sheet, but, the, but where he fit, um, how he fit, you know, he really saved us on, um, there was one play they, they really had us on, we adjusted at halftime. Um, a little a little wind back, what we call an insert play, where the where the the, the fullback comes back. Um, we did not play it right with a, off the motion, and he defeated the block and made the tackle. If he stays on that block, which he probably would have three or four weeks ago, um, that that play goes for a, goes for a way. So, um, yeah, his his growth is definitely something that's that's exciting. You talk with Neil about the ball hawk rate <laughs> stat and you guys leading the country, but then also how that could mean you're missing interceptions and missing turnovers. And he did bring up that being one point of the defense that, that could have been improved against Cincinnati. What are you noticing about maybe why those takeaways and interceptions and things like that are not happening as much the last couple of weeks as comparison to where they were? He mentioned, you know, leaving your feet, things like that. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton of things that go into – to. Um, yeah, I mean it's um, the simplest one is catch the ball, you know, catch the ball. But there's, um, you know, there's a couple of plays in there where, where, um, you know, we're in a zone defense and and guys are there's I think there's two where they break essentially on the route instead of the ball. Um, so they end up at the point of contact, they make the play, it's incomplete, and you and it's it's a good play, but it could have been a great play. Um, so there's. There's tons of things that go into that, um, whether and and just like anything else, you, if you do jump, it's when you time your jump. Did you need to jump? Um, there's all kinds of things that go into that. All you can do is is continue to practice it, and we we go through ball drills, and every day, every day at practice. And um, but there's, you know, if there's a specific one you ask about, I could probably give you a better answer. But um, there's a couple in there that I think were breaks that were on the route instead of the ball is the, is the easiest answer to give you. You mentioned Ben's ability to fit the run against Cincinnati. You always credited Jared Bartlett saying he did a good job of that. And just give us your impressions of what you saw against him in Cincinnati. Is that kind <laughs> yeah. of that whole doing your 111th part? Yeah, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's the same thing with Ben the, that, we, that I talked about, just really in a different um, – a little bit different light being being up on the ball most of the time and on the edge, especially against an outside zone um, stretch stretch team that's going to try to push you and then cut. Um, and and Jared did probably played the best football game honestly since he's been here. And I know everybody always goes back to you know having a three sack game at Virginia Tech a couple years ago and those things. And 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 those are there's nothing to take away from those games, um, but. When you talk about a complete football game as an edge defender, just doing your job, um, you know I take the uh, the first stretch of the game um, that goes for about four yards, and he does a really, really uh, he essentially plays two gaps. He forces the ball back and he overlaps the play, and makes a tackle for a gain of four. And that's not something. Again, I said this at the beginning. That's not something that's going to be flashy or people are going to look at it and say, "Oh, that's a great play." But if he doesn't do that. Again, that play hits us for a big, a big run, and he does it about six or seven other times throughout the day. Um, that are just routine plays, and and one of 
our message has always been to, to our guys is, you know, I, I, everybody always wants to make the three or four plays that are going to flash or they're going to be on highlights or they're going to be um, at the end of the night on ESPN that people are going to talk about. But if you take an 80-play game, there's, there's 75 other routine plays. Those are the ones that win you the game uh, that nobody talks about. And, and, and Jared had a ton of those, more than he's had all year, that he's just simply doing his job and, and the fundamental that he's taught to do it and executing that. Um, even when things are moving fast. And I thought it was the best football game he's played. Number one concern with Baylor. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they do a really, really nice job. It's very similar schematically to what we, what we, just, um, what we just saw. But they give you more moving pieces pre-snap to that. A lot of shifts, a lot of motions, um, changing the formation, change, <coughs> excuse me, changing the strength of the formation, uh, moving the back. Just just doing the same, running their offense, just presenting it a lot of different ways, which can get your eyes um, in some bad places. Um, and then I, th I think the tight ends, you know, their, their tight ends are, are um, they're, yeah, they're threats. Um, they're, they were, you know, the uh, 89, I think, is the one kid last year that really gives us some issues. Uh, is a big athlete, can line up anywhere, anywhere across the field. Um, and, and, and hurt you can line up in the slot, can line up on the ball, can line up even at the one receiver. Um, and, and the quarter, I think the quarterback's really good. I think Shapin is, is a really good player. I haven't studied the stats closely. Um, are they doing a, a high number of fourth downs? And oh, are they yeah. doing them in strange places? Yeah, I mean, they, if, it's, if it's across the uh, minus, which is, um, you know, their end of the field, if it's across about the minus 35 or 40, you're, you're, you're playing – However you want to look at it, two second downs, two first downs, you're, you're going to play more than likely four downs if the distance is manageable. So, um, and I think that's been their tendency for uh, since the head coach, since Coach Rand has been there. Sometimes minus twenty. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I don't. We're always you playing these guys. Even going back to last year, we prepared our kids for it all over the field. So you got to win first and second down to try to get that to third or fourth and long. Oh yeah, that's the deal. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. If you uh, and like I said, I mean it's it's however you you view it. Whether you're playing, you want to approach it like you're playing two first downs, and you know one's a run tendency or one's a pass tendency. Just and I'm just using that as an right. example, not that that's theirs, but or you're playing two second downs where you get a good first down and that next down, no matter what. Usually the distance, if it's short, you say, all right, guys, this is a waste down. They can take a shot here. Um, theirs doesn't matter. It could be second 12, and that's essentially a waste down. So you're going to play a, another second down next, and your third down is a fourth down, just however you want to view it, you know. And then I think you throw in the other uh, variable in here is, is it their, this is their last game. Hmm. So that could open up a whole bunch of things. Yeah, I mean, there, it's, it's uh, you know, teams and, and like this and those situations are extremely dangerous, you know. And, and you know, we just have to go and, and, and execute and, and – do the things that we've we've done when we played our best, um, but it is you know it's always you know one of those you know why wouldn't they kind of correct so you got to prepare for that going in. One bandit last week, right? I think James played one snap, maybe something like that. Uh, uh, Tor Simmons played. Uh, I was gonna yeah. say I had you supplement that to you because I saw him out there on the line. I figured that was the fix to get him in. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a good timing for Jared to have that game though. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Is it like that all with shaping? Because you watch him play and you look at his numbers and they're really good, but then it's like, why do they only have three wins? I mean, there's there's a ton tons of factors that that there's there's more than statistics that go into winning a football game. You know, there it's just you know I, it's uh, that's the only way I really know how to how to put it. You know, whether whether it's special teams plays, whether it's um, you know, how the defense is just all kinds of situational things that go into, you know, I just look at pre preparing for an offense. Um, you know, you look at the statistics to determine where they're good. And, and then those are the things you really have to focus on stopping Cincinnati, for example, they're, they're good at running the football. You know, go back to UCF, 
you know, I think UCF at the time we played them was somewhere around between 240 and 260 a game rushing. And we hold them to 180, which is not, a, not necessarily a good number, but it's well below their average. You know, so I, like I'm happy at the end of that because of what we were able to do that day. Now, the overall stat doesn't look good. You know, everybody's going to say, well, why can't you stop the run? Well, okay. If they give up 260, that they give up their average, they probably would have won the game, held them to below their average, win the game. That's all the only stat that matters is the win and loss at the end. Um, so there's there's all kinds of things that go into that. You know, I can't I'm not deep enough into into Baylor yet to know whether it's a what what the issue is, um, but you just go off the the stats and the players. You know, the tight ends are extremely dangerous. Running back, even going back to last year, the Reese kid is a kid is has has dangerous speed. And then I think the quarterback is is probably one of the most underrated in our league. Um, it, you know, it, it, this is the same kid that when Baylor won the Big 12, come in and, and in the Sugar Bowl and won the game. You know, same same guy. You know, this this the guy doesn't doesn't really change. And so, you know, you know where they're good and you prepare. That's what you have to stop. Yeah, do you have sympathy for opposing? Defensive coordinators who see who see Garrett Green put the ball in the White's belly and don't know where it's going to wind up. No. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah, that's right. That's right. No. No, I don't. I, uh, nobody has sympathy for me. Zero blitz in Oklahoma and watching him not get there either. So, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs>